today's episode of Still to be Determined, we're going to be talking about whether or not you should start auctioning off your poop to the highest bidder. Hey, everybody. As usual, I'm Sean Farrell. I'm a writer. I write some sci-fi. I write some stuff for kids. And I'm all around inquisitive around things tech. And lucky for me, with me is my brother, Matt. You, of course, know him from Undecided with Matt Farrell. Matt, how you doing? I'm pretty good. How about you, Sean? Uh, you've had a... <laughs> It's been a couple of weeks. It's been, been it's been a couple of weeks. Regular listeners or viewers will recognize that we did not drop an episode last week. That was not by design. That was by COVID. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Last week on Friday, I woke up feeling like I wasn't ready to wake up. And as the morning progressed, I began to realize I was now hitting all the boxes as far as symptoms. I gave myself an at home test. It was positive, and I have been in recovery since then. And to anybody who there were some people who shared their concerns, I appreciate your concern. This never for me reached a point where I was in any way scared or concerned for myself. It was largely like flu. So all things considered, I think this is a case of the science worked. I look at it as I was vaccinated. You were vaccinated. I was, yeah. I was vaccinated. I was boosted. So was my partner. She also got it. We tried very hard at the in the first couple of days to isolate me so that she wouldn't get it. But the reality was we woke up in the same bed on Friday morning. Like I was yeah. now exhibiting symptoms at that point. I would have been infectious for probably 24 to 36 hours before that. And she and I were spending all of our time together. Yeah. So we tried very hard to help her dodge the bullet. She wasn't able to do it. Her immune system being what it is compared to mine, she wasn't hit as hard, thankfully, but both of us were able to recover and recover comfortably at home without having to do anything extra. Like there were no emergency room visits. So all things considered, this was unfortunate experience, but it was one that I think part of me had been looking at it as yeah. it's inevitable at a certain point. We're all going to get began, it at some point. I began to think of it yep. as like, well, this is inevitable and it's about being prepared. And so for me, it was about boosters and still practicing as much safe stuff here in New York State. Restrictions have largely been lifted back to a, I'd say if they at their height were at a level 10, they feel like they're at about a level three right now. You see people out on the street, you see people in stores, you see people in the subway who are not wearing masks. They are not the majority here in New York City. Other parts of the state are different. But for myself, I, it made me recognize, okay, I need to do some things that I hadn't been doing. Like my mask wearing while being strong, I was wearing the wrong kind of mask. I was wearing cloth. I wasn't wearing one mm -hmm. of the, the KN95 or N95 masks. So that needs to change for me. And recognizing, okay, I was getting a little lax in about you know, the, the days leading up to getting sick, I was starting to do things like getting together with people and not wearing masks in situations where I really should have been. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go back to a personal, more restrictive form of socializing. Yeah. But, and the day before I got sick, I was looking at the calendar and believe it or not, you look at my youthful glow and you think, well, that guy must be 20, 22. <laughs> I am of the age where I could get another booster. Yeah. I am I'm at that age mark. I'm I'm 50 years old, so I'm able to get another booster. And on the day before I got sick, I was looking at the calendar and I was seeing like, oh, in a couple of days, I will be at the point past my previous booster where I will now be eligible again. I need to remember to make that appointment. <laughs> and then the next day I started to get sick. Yeah. So timing being what it was. I would have preferred to get the booster as opposed to getting sick, but the fact that I got sick and got through it because of the boosters, because of the vaccines, I'm considering myself very, very lucky. So, yeah. so that was my whirlwind week. It's been very easy for me to forget what day it is. Yeah, it all kind of I'm blurred sure. together. Yeah. I contacted Matt. After getting sick, I contacted him, our parents said like, oh, I'm sick with COVID, but please don't worry. I think I'm recovering already. And I let Matt know, yeah, I'm not going to be recording this week. So we had to pull the plug on last week's episode. And then while that was happening, Matt, you had your own set of headaches, didn't you? Around yeah. uh, technology doing what technology likes to do, which is not what humans like it to do. No. Talk uh, a bit about how you got locked out of your own channel. 
Yeah, my main YouTube account got suspended. And it happened on Tuesday morning, which is when I launched my new videos. And I got up on Tuesday morning and I went to go into YouTube studio to see how the, the launch went because it's always scheduled ahead of time and got this screen that said, <laughs> you've been locked out, son. <laughs> I was like, what is going on here? The way, the way that YouTube works is that you can have a personal account with a personal YouTube channel, or you can have what's called a branded account. And all of my channels, I, like this, Trek and Time, uh, vice versa, and Undecided are all branded accounts. So think of like a big corporation has a Coca-Cola YouTube channel. And then you have people that have permissions to log in and use it. My main account, the owner and administrator of all these channels, that channel was suspended. And the reason it was suspended was not clear because the way YouTube communicates is like, if you don't know what you did, we're not going to tell you. It's kind of the attitude. All it said was, you've been suspended for community violations. Okay. So I go and read the community violations and it's like promoting violence and sexual harassment and all the stuff. Like, I'm not doing any of that stuff. Right. What's going on? And the only things it could have been were false promotion or impersonation. And I was like, what, what was going on here? And that's when things started to click of, oh, for the past six months, it's been kind of a big thing in the YouTube community. There have been a lot of fake accounts. And I've had this happen to me where somebody creates an account called undecided with Matt Farrell underscore or undecided with Matt Farrell mid dot, you know, that kind of a thing. So it yeah. looks like me and they use my avatar and they come into the comments and they respond to people's comments saying, hey, I'm doing a giveaway and you won the random selection from the comments. Message me on WhatsApp and I'll get you your, your award. And usually they end up going, well, you have to pay us 50 bucks for shipping because I can't handle the shipping. And they get money and you never get your thing. Right. So this, it's a big thing that's been building over past six months to a year and it's been getting really bad. On my channel, I have tons of bots that like I, I post a video and within 10 minutes, the first comments will always have a bot that's doing pornography or cryptocurrency or fill in the blank. It's just like right. bots galore, all this kind of stuff, impersonators trying to scam people. Yeah. It's YouTube is dropping the ball and they're not doing a good job and they've been criticized. It's in those comments on your videos that yes. I'm getting most of my crypto and porn. Oh, so, that's good. That's yeah. good. So, it's, so, so it's I find working. that very it's useful. Working. It is working. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, YouTube is starting to try to crack down on that and they clearly, my, my, my main account is called shocking Matt Farrell. Right. <laughs> and guess what? It has a picture of me. <laughs> it's the same picture I use right. on Undecided. So they assumed this is an impersonator and they closed that account down and they have an appeals process. I appealed three times and each time it got rejected. Each time I went in circles with YouTube support. They have a, a partner support chat for YouTubers and I went in there and three times, three or four times it didn't, went nowhere. They escalated it to a- Are you speaking with a human or can you tell if it's a- It's a human. AI, okay. It's a human. Everybody I dealt with was pleasant, professional, and great, but it came across as they've set up this Byzantine, I felt like I was in the movie Brazil. You know what I mean? Like it's like a right, bureaucracy right. that's so yeah. sprawling. That well, if you're really who you are, you should have been able to prove that before we even needed proof. So the fact that you didn't right. provide us with that proof that you are who you say you are before we needed the proof proves yes. that you aren't who you say you are. So it's, it's also this group of, is yeah. this group over here is saying go talk to that group over there and that group over there is telling me to talk to the group I, over here i just talked to and then that group says well talk to this group it's like nobody knows what's going on nobody's talking to each other everything's right. on me to figure out and solve they're the big wonderful youtube they don't do anything wrong so it must be you and i was caught in this loop and i had a lot of friends that are youtubers that were telling me to to talk to team youtube on twitter so i started tweeting at them and i made a video pleading like I'm making this video of myself saying this is not a fraud. <laughs> I am who I say I am. Right. And because it's, I, I have a sub account that has limited editor access on Undecided still, I was able to still post that video. So I posted that video on Undecided with Matt Farrell is unlisted and I tweeted it. I'm like, this is me. I yeah. managed to post it onto my official channel. From you effectively, You effectively posted a picture yes. of yourself holding today's newspaper yes. in a hotel bathroom somewhere yes to prove the proof of life so here's how broken the youtube system is is that that is what i believe broke the log jam on top of which a bunch of my youtuber friends were replying to that tweet saying to youtube you got to fix this what the hell's going on and right. 
I have one of, there's another YouTuber who shall remain unnamed, who knows somebody over at YouTube in the support team that reached out to them directly. So I had people coming at this from multiple vectors. Right, right. And the only reason this got solved was because I have that. Like, right. I have a channel that has over 800,000 subscribers. I have that, should not be, that should not be a that prerequisite. Should, yeah. No, this is yeah. not how this should happen. The final message I got from YouTube support once they reactivated it was, this should have never happened, clearly, and that it has been escalated up deeper into the YouTube team, which says to me, the product team is now aware of what happened to me. Right. And it sounds like they're trying to go, what happened? And they're, they're probably going to be this next week be doing a postmortem of, what happened to try to figure out to make sure it's it what, what's astounding is is i know i know about as much about computers at this point i feel like i know just about five <laughs> percent more than our parents yeah <laughs> and our parents are are you know in their 80s we love them but when it comes to computers they're like we don't know where to what? put the magic and i know just a little little bit more than they do <laughs> i know this much though youtube could tell that the computers accessing all of your accounts came from the same IP address. Not even just that, Sean. All I don't understand do- why, like why, <laughs> the- why would they not be looking at that level of saying like, these are all from the same they're, computers. They're, 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 their machine learning algorithm that's probably doing the auto banning that started this all is probably just looking at, is the avatar ripped off from the channel that we're looking at? Yeah. Is the username similar enough but different? Does it look like a scam? Yes. The problem with that is all they would have to do is go one level deeper on my main account and say, does this channel have any access to that channel that we think they're ripping off? And they would yeah. have seen my channel has per- owner permissions to everything that they thought I was scamming. Right. It's like the fact that the, whatever they set up doesn't even go a level l- deeper for permissions. It's yeah. like if they had done that, it wouldn't have gotten caught, but they didn't. And the fact right. that humans, when they went to appeal it in the appeal process, didn't even do the due diligence there themselves either. Right. It's like it's a so the machine failed and the people failed. Their systems need some significant overhaul. And yeah. this is not the only problem with YouTube. YouTube has a lot of issues from a creator point of view, but this yeah. one was major. It, sh- yeah. it basically froze my business last week, and this is how I make a living. So if you want to say I was panicked, that would be an yeah. understatement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you and I talked about it in your experience. I mentioned something to you that you hadn't been aware of, which was I have always been a fan of the video game Destiny. Matt has been a fan of the game as well. And recently there was a dust up between Bungie, the makers of Destiny and YouTube. And Bungie is now in the process of suing YouTube. And it revolves around YouTubers who were masquerading as Bungie and putting copyright claims on people's accounts and Mm -hmm. they were getting YouTubers shut down. And these are people like Matt who make their living from this. So this was a, a level of, of personal and business disruption that has real economic impact. And so now it's started this process of Bungie suing YouTube basically saying your, your system is broken if you don't have in place something to actually verify the claims made by individuals. And it sounds like your experience is a version of that within mm-hmm. YouTube, where yep. YouTube's own systems are doing that to its users and not, not connecting dots properly. And as you said, this is the tip of the iceberg as far as like complaints that creators have about YouTube as a company, what it, mm-hmm. how it handles things in its in its uh relationships with its its users and all of that is i mean the headaches of that go beyond like you said this is your business that goes beyond simply a frustration of like why can't i upload or download this video the way that i want to be able to this is and the fact that four days why did the locks on my business change (laughs) why am i not able to get into my own business it shouldn't have taken four days it should not have taken four days so speaking of crap (laughs) nice transition sean yeah you're a professional yeah as we're going to be talking about matt's most recent episode this is from april 12th 2022 turning human waste into renewable energy question mark and i find that covid in my chest is making the question mark easier to hit that's a nice little (laughs) squeak at the end there so 
the technology at work here, I love the fact that this is as simple as saying it's a pressure cooker. Yeah. It's and a giant pressure cooker. It is a process, as you point out, who was the originator of this back in the early 1900s? The Oh, I can't remember his name offhand. The German, the yes. German scientist who originated this process yes. and said, yes. like, oh, we could do this. And I'm sure he wasn't talking explicitly about human waste. I'm sure he was saying you could take any biomatter and yes. you know, like you could accelerate the natural process that occurs within the earth to create a kind of coal. And mm -hmm. this is what happens. And it's the simplicity of a pressure cooker, the gentleman that you interviewed describing it as you're taking the water up to a state of boiling where it's not allowed to actually convert to steam. Yep. And that doing something to the water molecules, which effectively is breaking down all the molecule chains into very basic component parts and then allowing them to recombine into a far more basic structure, which is in effect coal. Yes. I love the fact that this is that simple that you can, you could on a certain level recreate this. If you had the right equipment, a home lab, you could you can do, do stuff anywhere. along that. You could do stuff along these lines. You could like people have pressure cookers that they cook with. I mean, this is not something that would be in some of your videos, the science behind, well, here's a cathode and an anode and the static electricity and then your yeah. brain and and, <laughs> and the breaks. sun comes out and <laughs> where's the wind and how are we going to do all of this and this seems so like okay here's this static thing and this is how we do it and when we're done we end up with this and the beauty of it not only being this but this can be used as a fuel this can be used as a filter this could be used in all these different ways and yet nobody nobody knows about it Yes, that's my favorite part. It like, almost seems like an April Fool's joke. It almost seems like, yes. you know, what's the technology that is the most basic technology that could change the world that nobody knows about? And it's what it I, seems what like I love, it's this. What I love about all of this is that the person, one of my followers reached out to me about this and said, I know a guy that's turning crap <laughs> into energy. And I think it's right up your alley. He made that joke to me. He said, this, this video is going to be so full of puns and bad mm -hmm. jokes yes. and it's also interesting technology i think this is perfect let me Hat introduce tip to you. you and your writers by the way yeah the yeah. number <laughs> of poop jokes embedded in this yes including at one point the most subtle of them and i don't i didn't see anybody in the comments point this one out and i assume it was embedded intentionally but maybe i'm reading too deeply into things but there was the phrase that you said this is right up my alley and even that, I was just like, oh, that was, that was, a, that was a good one. That like just <laughs> under the door. Like, yes. I loved it. Yeah, there were a few in there. The writer that I worked with on this one, he had some good ones. But the ones I was most proud of were the opening pun was was mine. You know, renewable, you know, solar and wind is number one, but what's number two? Yeah. I thought that was, I was very proud of that one. But this, it, it wrote itself. But the thing that struck me was I had never heard a thing about this. Like, it was just completely new to me. And the more I dug into it, the more I realized really nobody knows about this. Like nobody's talking about it. Yeah. This is not a thing in the public sphere. And I thought this is worth talking about because it's raising awareness. That there's this neat technology that's been around for a long time and we're finally taking advantage of it. Yeah. And from the company's perspective, he mentioned that they had been the recipient of a governmental award. Yep. As far as this is a technology that should be used across the country. Obviously. Yeah. I mean, I, I love the video. Absolutely thinking like, yes, absolutely. This should be functioning in every municipality across the country. Mm -hmm. The fact that their energy consumption consumption is 125% turnaround, mm -hmm. that they're not only energizing themselves, like it becomes this kind of question mark of, is that even possible? Can we start yeah. this up? And then it just, not only is it, powering itself but it's putting electricity back into the system that's a win-win it's Even taking care of the waste which is a win yes it is creating a useful good which is a win it made me wonder about one of the layers standing in the way was 
getting licensed to actually be able to do this to the waist. Yes. Yes. Is the first hurdle. One of the things you didn't talk about, and I wondered how far into the regulatory process this is, the usage of the byproduct would also require yes. regulatory okay. Even well, if it was, even if you were making a new type of brick out of sand, you would need to get it approved for use in a building, a wall or yes. a home, yes. things like that. It, it, it just, it wouldn't be, it, th- this is not being treated differently from any building material. But if you're making bricks out of this, it's going to have to go through another layer. Do you know where any of that regulatory process it's still- is? It's still very early days. Like this stuff is going to take a while to spool up. Not only is it going to take a while to spool up putting these 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 HTC plants into place, it's going to take a while to spool up all the different avenues that that material could be used. Because as you pointed out, it's like we're talking about it can produce energy, but it doesn't have to produce energy. It's producing a material that can be used in numerous different products, but that supply chain, in some cases, is there. In other cases, it's not. So like if you're talking about this new bricks, new cement, uh, asphalt kind of stuff, that's still really early days on, yeah. on implementing that kind of thing. But the number one thing that can be used for today is generating electricity because this can be used in a coal-fired plant to generate electricity. And, there and it, has less, is, it has less of a carbon footprint than coal? The way to look at it is with coal, you're digging into the ground to, to dig up uh, carbon that's been sequestered for who knows how long, millions of years underground to burn it and you're putting it back into the a- atmosphere. Okay. This is taking carbon that is essentially already, already existing in, the is- in here yeah. okay. and you're taking it down and you're putting it back up. So it's carbon neutral. It's not okay. carbon negative. You're just right. kind of cycling it back and forth. So it's not pollution free, but it's not making the situation worse. Right. So you so got to look at it from that point of view. It's basically saying, okay, this was a plant and Correct. we ate the plant. And then we pooped out the plant and now we're converting it to something that could be used to either feed a plant or to generate electricity. Right. But because it was already a plant, it was already part of our bio system. Right. 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 So basically using this stuff as fertilizer and for power generation, those supply chains are already kind of there. So this could immediately be used for that kind of stuff. But the other stuff we talked about, we talked about it could be used for graphene, for activated charcoal for filtering water, those kind of things are going to take a while to spin up, but it, it seems like it's, it's a win-win today and it's just going to get better over time is right. the best way to look at it. It also seemed like it wasn't limited in his description to just human waste. It no. really seemed like this could be something <laughs> if you could isolate from your garbage, the non-bio and the biomatter that you would be able to say like, okay, this I'm not everybody can compost, but everybody's garbage. If it was, this is all the food stuff that I wasn't consuming that goes into a separate Mm -hmm. bag. And then that bag goes to one of these plants. It could be included in this process. Yeah. The, the other thing is like, we, I included at the end of the video, the whole, they play this game. Does it carbonize? Yeah. I immediately thought of like a 1970s game show, like with some, does it carbonize? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it, it's, it's one of those, pretty much anything organic can be put through the system, anything organic. So it's, it's very versatile. So there, right. it's not just going to make sense for waste reclamation plants. It's, it could be used in numerous different ways, but the first angle is this waste reclamation because it's, we have to deal with this stuff. We have a never ending flood of poo. It's never yes. going to stop. Yeah. So let's put it to use. Let's, let's, let, let's get something out of it. And at what rate can it work? I mean, that's one of the things that... It's fast. It is fast. He was saying it takes about... It depends on what you're doing. Because he was... He did, I didn't put it in the video, but it depends on what temperature, what temperature and pressure you target and for how long will determine what you get out of it. So you can actually create kind of like, like methane. You can get methane gas. You can get like liquid that can be turned into biofuels. You can get the carbon that's like charcoal. Depending on what you want to do and how you process it, you can get different things out of it. So you can fine tune it, but in general, it takes about four hours to process whatever you put into it. So that's really fast to be able to yeah. turn that around. So to scale it up, you just have to make your plan a little bit bigger, but you, you'd be able to process this at a pretty good clip. Right. 
And do you know of any kind of NIMBY pushback that might occur as a result of a plant like this being put together? I know that we have waste treatment plants all over the country, and I'm sure that there's a lot of, you know, not in my backyard around just waste treatment plants to begin with. Would this be a different fight? Would this be something that would, would have a limitation to, I mean, I know that certain waste treatment plants, you recognize you're driving past them on the highway because you can smell them. Like, Mm -hmm. is this going to be that kind of experience or is this remove some of that? It doesn't. (laughs) You're you're, you're dealing with waste. You're still going to smell it. Right. So you do It's. I don't think it's any different than what you would have today with a regular waste treatment plant. So it's not going to make it harder or easier. Right. It's just a different thing. And did you get any information about conversion of existing facilities? Would this be a, you have to build a new place by, from scratch, or is this the kind of thing that would be able to take an existing waste treatment plant and actually convert it to this kind of production? You're not really, you're not really converting, but you are adding to it or building adjacent things. The, they're, mater- they're machines that do this. They look kind of like semi-truck trailers. So it's like the, you, you just bring these machines and these semi-truck trailers and set them up and you can basically set up a processing area adjacent to your regular wastewater treatment facility. So it's like right. it can be kind of tacked on and built onto hmm. so that you could keep processing the waste like you normally do, but you could take a portion of that and start funneling it into this other process. And just before we leave, just a reminder, you can reach out to us through the comments on YouTube, or you can check out the contact information in the podcast description. And I wanted to share a couple of comments on this video, which caught my eye. And I think they nicely bookend the conversation we've been having. There was this one from Lee Johnson, who simply writes, solid presentation, definitely not a waste of time. Thank you for flushing out the details. Yes. Lee, I'm with you on all of those. Thank you for sharing. And then there was this one from Rocky. Rocky H writes, I work in the wastewater treatment industry first as a plant operator and now as an engineer, and I have never heard of this. I knew that coal is made by heat and pressure. That, to my knowledge, has never actually been observed in nature, only theorized. I at first scratched my head at that comment, but then I thought, well, yeah, you wouldn't be able to actually watch millions of years past to see the coal yes. created. Yeah. But I'd never heard what info came out or how practical it could be in real life. I will ask around at the office what people think about this. I think that that is, I mean, I included both those comments and I do think, you know, I was like winking at the camera a bit, but I do believe that that bookends the conversation. On the one hand, you hear about this and you make poop jokes. On the other hand, people don't know about this. And this really is something that, as people within the industry find out about this, I'm very, very curious. And I hope that Rocky H will come back and share a follow-up yep. about having shared this with coworkers in the waste treatment industry. Is there a growing knowledge about it? Is there more curiosity about it? What is the thinking around it? I would love to hear a follow-up on that. Me too. So listeners, we would welcome your thoughts on would you welcome this kind of treatment plant in your area let us know like i said you can reach out through the contact information in the podcast description or you can go to youtube and scroll beneath the video where you will see matt's youtuber face and my covid face and you can leave (laughs) the comment there if you'd like to support the show please do consider reviewing us on apple google spotify wherever it is that you found us go back there and leave a rating or review If you'd like to more directly support us, you can go to stilltbd.fm. There's a become a supporter button there and you can chuck some coins at our head. Don't forget, you can click join on YouTube and become a member there as well. All of that really does help support the show. Thank you so much for listening, everybody. We'll talk to you next time.